Hello and welcome back to a brand new video where today we're talking about modifications for the Nissan 350Z. can see we're now in the Nissan 350Z. Does that, did that rhyme? As you guys can see we're now in the Nissan 350Z. Maybe. Probably not. We're in the car and I thought why not make a video about modifying my Nissan 350Z. It's the 2009 model, the HR model. So it's got the extra additional brake horsepower, many revisions. I think this engine specifically is like 70% different compared to the 2003 model. And yeah, I think that's about 313 brake horsepower, 0 to 60, about five and a half seconds. At the moment, completely stock. This car is stock at the moment. And I like stock cars, I think they're great. But when you've had, when you've modified your previous cars, whether that be a good thing or a bad thing, you, you just get addicted, right? You, you just get addicted. And I know it's more money and more investment, more time, and your car might depreciate and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you buy a car to have fun. Well, you might buy a car just to go to work in, and it might be a very fuel efficient car, but for me, most of my cars have been for fun. My first car was, my first car, car man, what do you want about? My first car was a Renault Clio 1.2, and that was modified. And yeah, I was one of those guys who was, you know, let's make this car sound fast, but it's not really fast. Then I bought a Bocanegra, which was limited edition, fantastic. My, you know, my second car, which was amazing, but it was very fast. You know, 180 brake horsepower, had it remapped, exhaust system to it and everything. It was honestly the perfect car for me. And then I decided to get a car which had a bigger than a 1.4 liter engine, because it was turbocharged and supercharged, but I wanted more power, more oomph, and just, I don't know, something more expensive. I don't know, that was my goal. So that's why I bought the Nissan Rudy Z. It was a 3.5 litre, naturally aspirated engine, V6, and it's now time to modify. I've had this car for nearly a year now, which is pretty insane. I've loved this car a bit. So I've only, in the year, I've only done 3,000 miles. Yeah, definitely need to start driving more. I love walking, but I definitely need to start driving more. That is definitely the key going forward. But what we need to do is we need to modify it. And today's video, is going to be talking about modifications to the car and what I plan on doing and you guys can leave suggestions down below. I'm probably not going to do anything crazy as of yet. I think I'm just going to do for the standard. I, I normally have a list. Whenever I buy a new car, it's like, yep, it needs this, it needs this, it needs this. So what I'm... Jeez, man, what are you doing, man? I'm sure people are trying to, you know, get on camera like, man, crashes. I mean, that would be quite a good video, but... I wouldn't want my Nissan to be crashed on camera, no. Especially it might get a lot of views. But anyway, we're talking about modifications to the car. Now my list generally for modifications to any car I buy is an exhaust system. I think an exhaust system is key. A, for performance, and B, for sound, and pops and cracks and all that kind of stuff. Tinted windows, if a car already hasn't got it, I like, I don't know. I like the privacy, I guess, but it's not really the privacy. It just makes it look more aggressive and just, I don't know, more fun in general, I guess. And sometimes an air filter, maybe, and sometimes a remap. That's my like go-to list for make, modifying a car. But regarding this car, it's a little bit different. So we're definitely gonna go for an exhaust system. Um, I'm excited for an exhaust system. I'm too sure who to go with. I might go with my friend Naz, who's done my last two exhaust systems, go down the custom route, which would be pretty good. So I can then see how loud I want it how much I wanted to pop and crack and all that kind of stuff. Second modification, I was thinking of doing like an induction kit air filter, but according to the forums, I normally go with like K&N, I go for an induction kit. People say if it's already been, if it's if it needs to be oiled, apparently the Nissan is not a fan of it being like, being oiled, 
they just like it being normal. So if that's the case, I'm not too sure. People say it adds performance, some people it doesn't add performance. So if you have an air filter for this and Ruby Z and it works and it's good, please let me know. Whether it be a standard air filter or a induction kit, please let me know. The next modification is tinted windows. Like I've said, tinted windows for me is a key. So we've got tinted windows, we've got exhaust system, we've got air filter, potentially a remap. I think there's a company called like Uprev or something like that. It's like a main provider for the Nissan Z. And you're like, Matt, why would you remap a naturally aspirated engine? Well, apparently you can get like an extra 15 to 25 brake horsepower, an extra 30 pound feet of torque. So, you know, it's probably worth it. And what else? I don't think there's much else for my remap. I think, oh dear, oh dear. We're literally fighting wars today. But I think that's pretty much it. I don't see there being anything else to modify the car. I might do an updated list later on in the future. But please let me know your thoughts, guys, down below about modifications for my Nissan Rover 3DZ. If you have enjoyed today's video, then be sure to give it a massive thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below your thoughts regarding my Nissan Rover 3DZ and what type of modifications I should be uh, going for. But now I'm off to get a Starbucks. What are you doing, woman in your Shoroko? Get out the way! But yeah, better get a Starbucks. It's very early in the morning. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Adios, shops. Boom!